So good afternoon all of you uh, and welcome to the course Design, Technology and Innovation. This course is a combination of three large sort of areas, not even disciplines, where we need to see, you know, how we can come up with innovation using design and technology. That's our major focus. So for today's uh, class, we will consider the Jaipur foot as our case study. Important aspect of the Jaipur foot is that it is a prosthesis. The prostheses are different from ones which are put inside the body. These are which are artificially they are supporting the body from external aspects when there is an amputation or you know some deformity in the legs or in the hands. So this Jaipur foot is an extremely unique design and according to me one of the best innovation examples in the country. This was started very interesting collaboration between a craftsman called uh, Ram C. Sharma who was you know basically uh, building uh, polio calipers for children and he observed a bicycle on the road and said why can't I make a foot as strong as the bicycle tire for these you know, kids. So he started building wooden mock-ups because he's already working in the SMS Medical College in Jaipur. He had this orthopedic surgeon Dr. P.K. Sethi. So he would go to the doctor and say I'm working on this. So the doctor would give him all the anatomical details what type of system should be done, what type of gait the, the leg would have. So all those details he would provide. And both of them together built multiple samples. So there's the initial you know, development which happened. So basically the Jaipur foot will have three major components. The prosthetic foot, the most critical one in this design. The knee joint, if it is an you know, upper amputation, the above the knee amputation, you will have a knee joint and a socket and shank to fit the thigh areas. So below the knee processes, you will just have the foot and the shank, which will fit into the leg. In 1969, they started, but it was not going forward. They were doing some 10 or 20 prostheses for various you know, uh, patients who would you know, lose their limbs. And it didn't you know, really scale up. So the scaling up was done by D.R. Mehta, who was an IAS officer, who took special interest in the Jaipur foot. And he, has to, he had to pick it up from the hospital and make it into a society. And he said, I am going to provide this Jaipur foot free of cost and the quality will be phenomenally good. And then since then, you know, with, this has been a revolution. So interesting situation is that the doctor and the craftsman team kept the Jaipur foot at a very low volume level. Not because the Jaipur foot didn't have the potential, just because of the human tendency of not understanding how you can scale up. Whereas an IS, you know, uh, Indian Administrative Service, uh, you know, retired professional would actually talk about scaling, right? Talk about reaching more number of people. So his whole strategy was, how can I make this reach across the world? you know, across the country to all the, you know, people who are handicapped. We have dancer from, you know, Andhra. There was a movie called Nacha Mayuri and she actually danced in a program and there was a large movie and that made it very popular. Everybody got to know about it and the, you know, a lot of people started coming to Jaipur to get the foot. So that's how the whole journey started and our interest in the product came up. And I visited the place. I got a phenomenal insight on how this Jaipur foot was helping the poorest of the poor in the country. The people who get amputated generally are farm laborers, truck drivers, salt pan workers. Tell me, why would a salt pan worker have an amputation? Salt pan, you know, making salt. Infection from any cuts or wounds in his leg while being on the sand. So that infection can cause gangrene and then they will need to ampute his leg. A lot of people are there like that. So, you know, that's a very good case for us to consider a salt pan worker. Where else you see, you know, standard cases of amputation? Heavy machinery. Heavy machinery, very good. Heavy machinery, generally you have amputated arms, legs in heavy machinery, little, little less, but it is there. And, uh, you know, truck driving and, you know, accidents are more common, you know, for the leg amputation. So, here you can see the person walks in, he gets the processes and he goes back the same day walking. 
unbelievable. All this is done because of the association, the Bhagwan Mahavir Viklang Sahitya Samiti. So the vision of BMVSS, you know, is that you know they want to actually give both the physical, economical, and social rehabilitation. The whole organization which built that type of system, because the people who come, it's very important. The people who come are you know extremely poor. In fact, most of them who come don't even have their breakfast. So when they come, they give them food. For the everlasting credit of D R Mehta, that I A S officer. He said, Chakravarti, did you observe that these people who come don't have one disability? They have three disabilities. One is amputation. The second is they are extremely poor. Because while they got amputated, I believe, they were out of work for six to seven months. While they were recuperating with the operation or with the leg. And they would, their, all their finances would have dwindled. And then the third disability is that they were illiterate. They only had a skill. The large number of people who would come, 90%, 95% of them. So I need to tailor make the design to suit the design of the complete system to see those type of people. If I identified only one disability as handicapped, then I would do anything in the world. Let me give you a small example over here. We had Abdul Kalam, who was the very senior scientist at the Defense Metallurgical Research Laboratory much, much earlier. He went to the Jaipur Center, Jaipur Food Center, and he said, My God, this Jaipur food is very heavy because I am coming from the context of metallurgy and fiber reinforced plastics and polymers and all those things. So I'll say, I have all these technologies in Defense Metallurgical Research Laboratory. Why can't I use it for the benefit of the people? Very noble thought. Okay. So the project was given to DMRL. So DMRL came up with this fabulous carbon fiber shank to be mass manufactured in a factory. Then made the foot design, the best possible rubbers. And that's it. And it's in the showcase of DMRL even after 25 years now. I'll tell you what happens there. It's very interesting that it is not just technology or research or value proposition. It's about the combined effect of the situation for which the product is being made. Every small component in the product from the cost, from the customization, from the delivery, from the mechanism, from the deployment, everything is very important. Just imagine that process was costing 30,000 rupees. And the Jaipur processes was just 2,000 rupees. DR Mehta would say, I would actually fit with 2,000. I will rather fit 15 people rather than give one to one high-end process to one guy. So I'll say 15 lives rather than saving one life. So he, he didn't pick up the technology. So this is the interesting study where I'm trying to say that you should not come from your perspective. For any of these type of very interesting studies of innovation, you need to very be very focused from the perspective of the end user. Whom are you, you know, working for? So that's the issue about the social rehabilitation for the disabled. So let me show you a, a video on how the thing is manufactured. You all observe very closely of how the whole aspect of the, you know, uh, aspect of the details I told you about customization, about finishing it off one day, type of manufacturing, what all is happening. You now I like to run this video for you. So this is the center in Jaipur. They come in, they sort of, you know, uh, they are taken in one by one. Everybody comes in, you know, to take their cards. And very simple process of using a plaster cast to get the exact mapping of the stump. Then you make a male cast out of the female thing and you have the stump which is your exact replica of your lower knee process. And then you use you know the process of plastic forming and he is now adding the leg part to it. So you add the PVC to fill plaster in that so that you get the complete leg part. 
So these are those high-end, uh, you know, uh, 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 polyethylene pipes which are heated. When you heat plastic, thermoplastic to a temperature, they become malleable, they become moldable. So you, you know, get the size into shape. And then you come down to the bottom parts where single, single plastic, you know, small, small parts, various, you know, fingers are put together, bound by rubber. And then, you know, put into the die and then pushed into the vulcanizing machine which is the oven. And here you have, you know, after the vulcanizing, you have your foot piece ready. So once the foot piece is ready, so you got the whole pipe ready and then it's fitted onto the human uh, body and then, you know, the person then goes home with the leg. So this whole process happens in a day because the BMVSS has done all the planning of keeping all the parts ready, manpower ready, who know how to you know handle these type of uh, large number of people and take the thing uh, you know forward. So there are a lot of uh, things happening, a uh, lot of tests happened. The whole world stood up to this innovation, saying that there's something great about this part because this leg, the processes was better than the imported processes in multiple ways. Tell me one thing. If this processes was costing 2000 and it is better than the processes from Germany, Ottawalk or the American processes, what do you think is the reason? Any guess? One is that it looks like a human foot. Very good. One sure shot thing is it's exactly like the human foot. But that, but that doesn't give you that type of advantage. It's cheaper so more people can more people can get it. That's also a very, very good point. Customized for a person. Very good. Hit on the nail. The top, top mark is for customization. What happens in the international processes? They make sizes, small, medium, large, Excel. And whatever sizes you make, when you put it on your stump, it will be loose. It will never fit exactly to the size of your stump. So what will happen? This is a process. You're walking. There's so much of movement. So the scaling happens on your stump. You get sores on your stump. With that problems, you get further component, they stop using the thing, you know, and if you get a swollen stump, you can't use your processes. So it's extremely critical. So look at the beauty of the design. This design with the limitation and the hard work of bringing all the people to Jaipur and then sending the processes to various locations, you bring the people in, right? It's completely reverse of an international, uh, you know, supply chain activity. So by doing that, you are getting something which is highly valuable for a product like a processes. If I trade off, I would trade off mass production to customization. Got it? Uh, so, so you said that it's custom made. So is there any part that is pre-made, the, the part that is not attached to the stump for example? Yeah, very good question. It's customized, but the customized part only is the stump. stump whereas the foot parts are all readily available. Whereas the, uh, the pipes are formed as per the heights of the people. So only the customization part is the, is the pipe assembly, the formed, you know, stump assembly. Okay, so today it is, you know, the most widely used process. People run, people play. In performance, it's more closer to the natural foot. Because here, when you do a standard processes, you can't bend your leg the amount of bending you can do in this leg. Okay, so here we have customized fitting of the leg, better than the imported processes. The biggest advantage comes that you can work in your salt pan again, because it's completely sealed. Look at the bottom, it's rubberized, silicon rubber. So you go to a salt pan lake, nothing happens to it. The top is highly chemical resistant polyethylene pipe. So that's also, you know, very, very good for your use. And then, you know, people can work in agricultural fields, paddy fields, and there's no issue at all. And the best part is that, you know, you can uh, go barefoot. So it culturally matches our requirements of sitting on the floor, going to temples, you know, and multiple uh, aspects, which made the cost go down drastically. And the production happened at large scale.
Tell me when it's non-profit, lot of people donated. Huge amount of organizations donated. Even our Ministry of Welfare, government came back and said, wow, you're doing a great job. Can I give you money? So, you know, that way there was a lot of service to the underprivileged and the uh, handicapped people. And the key to the success in all this was meeting a common goal. Remember those three disabilities I was saying? Meeting the three disabilities in the best possible way. Tell me, how will I meet the disability of being extremely poor? What will I do there? It's low cost, but he's not spending money. So they, they thought up till that level, they said, my God, this person is already was in the hospital. He's finished all his zoos. He, show, he sold his one acre plot. He's got nothing to do. So they thought about all that and actually they rehabilitated them by giving them cycle rickshaws. This is most probably for the you know people with the hand amputation. They work with them also. While they manufactured the uh, Jaipur food, they would manufacture cycle rickshaws and also give them. They set up a separate factory to give them the rickshaws for. Because once you have mobility, you can do a lot of work. Uh, and you know they can pedal and take it forward. Giving them job training. And women uh, would be you know given sewing machines. And uh, some of the men would be given uh, a tea shop uh, kit. I was completely sort of you know floored when I saw that while they were going out, they were handed over these you know kits which just would cost two thousand bucks or thousand rupees in the whole. And you know they would go out empowered to lead the life. As it is, it's very traumatic. The whole family is dependent on this one breadwinner, and you know he is down. The whole family you know takes into the next level. Every organization, like the when I've been working with Jaipur Food for the last 10 years, a lot of IITs, a lot of large institutes, large companies started coming in very, very heavily. They have some of the best gate labs set up at Jaipur in the you know center for process and orthotics. People have donated heavily for you know study of various aspects of below the knee and above, above the uh, knee processes. And then, as usual, you know, we had a lot of philanthropists, you know, Ratan Tata, then, then the US Secretary of State, Commerce, John Bress, and a lot of these interesting visitors would come. And because of that, what happened, the visibility increased and more and more technology started getting used. 